Hey guys, it's Dino Hansi here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about monkeys. Let's go. First, what are monkeys? What counts as a monkey is a bit of a complicated topic. Typically, in everyday use, a monkey is any member of the Samia forms that is not an ape. But technically, when you use cladistics, cladistics is grouping animals into clades based on common ancestry, the apes will also be included in the term monkey too. But for this video, I'm going to go with the everyday term and exclude the apes. So let's start with squirrel monkeys. And these monkeys are native to the New World, that is the Americas. They live in the rainforests of Central and South America, mainly the Amazon. There are five different species of squirrel monkey, and the shape of the white color above the eye is used to tell the difference between them. These monkeys can only sweat through the palms of their hands and soles of their feet, and this isn't enough to regulate their body temperature, so they like to stay in shady areas. Next are tamarins, and there are 22 species and 19 subspecies of tamarin. These are all New World monkeys and they are known for hair on their face which makes it look like they have a moustache. Tamarins move around trees in huge groups, sometimes up to 40 members. These monkeys usually give birth to twins. Next are mandrels, and mandrels are native to the Old World, and that is everywhere that is not the Americas. They live in the western parts of Central Africa. They are diurnal, meaning active during the day, and although they mainly eat fruits, they have also been known to eat insects and even small dacre. The dacre is the animal that you can see at the bottom on the left. They live in groups called hordes, which can have hundreds of members. These are usually females because males are solitary animals. Next are capuchins, and capuchins are in the Sabidae family. These New World monkeys are sometimes called white-faced monkeys, and you can probably see why that is. The oldest known New World monkey is a member of the capuchin family. It lived 21 million years ago and it is the earliest known mammal that traveled between North and South America. They are omnivores that have been known to eat shellfish by cracking their shells. Next are howler monkeys, and these New World monkeys get their name from their ridiculously loud howl. Even with the many obstacles blocking the sound from traveling in the rainforest, these monkeys' howls can be heard up to 4.8 kilometers, that's 3 miles away. There are 15 species of howler monkey currently recognized, and howler monkeys primarily eat leaves, but they also eat fruit. And here is their call. I mean, wow, you can definitely imagine hearing that in the rainforest would be something special. But now let's move on to Mokoks. These are old world monkeys that inhabit many parts of Asia, North Africa, and Europe. There are 23 species of Mokok, which have a variety of diets because of their large range. They mainly eat fruits, but will also eat leaves and a variety of meat sources depending on where they are found. They adapt easily to many different habitats and can even live in urban areas. Next are spider monkeys, and all seven recognized spider monkey species live in the New World. These species are also listed under threatened on the IUCN red list, with the brown spider monkey being critically endangered. They have very long limbs and prehensile tails. Prehensile tails are tails that can be used to hold objects or even to support almost the full weight of the animal. This is where the monkey gets its common name from, as the strange proportions of its limbs are similar to spiders. Next are marmosets, and there are 22 species of these New World monkeys. Goldie's marmoset is not one of these 22 species, but they are closely related to marmosets. You can see the Goldie's marmoset in the bottom left. They have many features which are different from other monkeys, with these differences looking quite primitive. They have claws instead of nails, they have no wisdom teeth, and their brain layout even looks quite primitive. Now, all monkeys from this point on are from the Old World. So let's go. And of course, we can't talk about old world monkeys without talking about the one and only baboon. And all six currently recognized species of baboon are in the Papio genus. This is one of the 26 of uh, 23 genera, now genera is the plural of genus, in the old world monkey group. 
The different species live throughout Africa and one species is native to the Middle East. The smallest baboon species gets to around 50 centimeters, that's 20 inches, in length, while the largest can get up to 120 centimeters, that's 47 inches. Next are guenos and terrestrial guenos. Yes, these are two different genera. The terrestrial guenos include the Lahus monkey, the Prusas monkey, and the sun-tailed monkey, while the Anagenius has 19 species. All members of both genera are endemic, endemic means they only live in, to sub-Saharan Africa, and the reason for their similar names is because the terrestrial guenos used to be included in the regular guenos. In the bottom right you can see a sun-tailed monkey, and in the bottom left you can see a moustached guenon, and guenon is the single of guenos. Next is the proboscis monkey, and there are two subspecies of this monkey, one ranges from Cambodia to the Philippines, while the other is only in parts of the island of Borneo. They are mostly found in mangroves and are famous for their huge noses. The males have much larger noses than females. You can see this in the pictures at the bottom. Proboscis monkeys use this large nose to make their calls louder. Next are snub-nosed monkeys, and these monkeys have a range from the parts of southern China to the northern parts of Myanmar and Vietnam. Snub-nosed monkeys are found at altitudes up to 4,000 meters, that's 13,000 feet, in forests on mountains. Because they are found so high up, humans haven't been able to deforest areas that they live in. Instead, more trees are actually growing. And when more trees are growing and we're not cutting down trees, we call that reforestation. Next are crested mangabis. And crested mangabis are usually dark in color and they get their name from the crest of hair on their head. You can see a picture of one of them at the bottom. There are many genera of mangabis which are all found in a tribe. And a tribe is a sort of subfamily called the Papionini. This is also the tribe that contains the baboons, which are in the Papio genus, like we discussed earlier. There are currently two recognized species, but this is also debated. And with that, it brings us to the end of this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed, I hope that you learned something, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!